with Dr. Daryl Turner. Now he's known worldwide because he's a worldwide man as Dr. T. And as part of this hormone conference, we have been addressing different aspects of the body and how hormones really affect that body when they're imbalanced. And I am so happy, Dr. Turner, to have you here because you're a medical researcher, you are a world lecturer, you're on the, the scientific board of India just to show you know, how worldwide you are. You're actually from Australia and we're now talking with you in Australia. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, right? Yes, Craig. <laughs> yeah, and you've created clinical trials, new inventions, solutions for medical problems, and you know, really, you are a huge expertise and have a huge body of knowledge with the thyroid gland and the adrenal stress glands. So, you know, I'm really interested to know, first of all, I want to welcome you, really welcome you. Thank you, Dr. Thank Hall. You time. And how did you initially get involved with, with the thyroid gland? Because you've done groundbreaking work with thyroid. How did you get involved in this and interested initially? Well, we had a lot of patients cu coming into our, into our clinic um, who would come in with symptoms. And of course, we would run the blood tests and the blood tests didn't match up with their symptoms. So they come in sick and we send them out sick. We couldn't treat them because the blood test told us, it's a TSH, told us that, uh, that they were uh, they were subclinical, and that's a term that we created to park these patients who had the symptoms, who weren't well, uh, but we wouldn't treat them because the TSH was in the normal range. Uh, and um, so we got talking about it, um, and, and, and myself and another doctor friend, I says, look, why don't we try and approach thyroid uh, from a different perspective? And perspective. There's blood work uh, and the patient's symptoms are not wor working. And by the way, most doctors do not ask the patients their symptoms. They just look at the TSH and they say, go home. Um, so we decided to write a list of all of the ways that we could test th th thyroid uh, from uh, basal body temperature to resting metabolic rate and all, they're, they're all different and, and reflexes. And then we decided to experiment. And then we built a machine and um, we did quite a bit of research and we, we, did, we uh, found a way to start to measure uh, how a patient's uh, reflexes and neurotransmitter speeds related to their symptoms. And, it, and it cor we found it, it correlated very, very well. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, in, in my clinical practice with, with mainly women, but also with men, I am astonished by how often uh, patients come to me and they say, well, I know my thyroid is low, my blood work is normal, I've been to see three other doctors, and nobody will treat me. And, you know, so when I met you and you, you know, we're going to talk all about your Thyroflex machine and I met you and you started really teaching me these nuances about uh, a, dis a discrepancy between what the blood work says and what's actually happening in the body. It was really a game changer for me, Dr. Turner, just really important. So l let's just, you know, the thyroid gland is right here. It's a big endocrine gland. Can you talk to, you know, our, our viewers about some of the important symptoms that they could, you know, if they have them, that might mean that they have low thyroid. Yes. In fact, your thyroid gland is just underneath my tie. There's a thyroid <laughs> cartilage above the thyroid gland. Uh, and then it's a, like a little, little um, heart shape uh, thing that, that wraps around your thyroid car cartilage. And it's just above the clavicles here. And the, ster the top of the ster ster sternum here, right, right here. Okay. Yep. You're, you're onto it. Uh, and, um, and if the thyroid starts to go haywire, the thyroid starts to enlarge. And we can feel that with our, with our fingers. We can feel if it's slightly enlarged, we can feel. Uh, this is after, after you felt a few thyroids. If it's got little lumps on, on it, and we, know, and we know that there is a problem. But the thyroid is like the central railway station, like uh, Grand Central Station, to all your body functions. Even though it's very, very small, it controls the quality of your life. 
Mm. If your thyroid starts to deteriorate uh, and it's not balanced, that means that the, the core hormones in and around the thyroid are not balanced. Your life, you know, the, your, your quality of life deteriorates year after year after year. In fact, according to Broder Barnes and uh, Terry Hertog, the number one and number two thyroid specialists in the world, they postulated in their books uh, that 80% uh, of everyone in the world has a thyroid disorder. And that is what you started to find once you got, once you started to test uh, that there was, a, it was like 80% of your patients. And this is what we found with all the machines that we have around the world, that 80% of the patients do have a thyroid disorder. So we confirm their hypothesis. Absolutely. So, you know, it is the engine of the body. So it runs our metabolism. It gives us energy. And what happens when the gland starts to fail? I mean, I know we're tired. What else would, could you tell our listeners about symptoms of sure. low thyroid? Well, this, well, the main symptoms is that you have low basal temperature. Mm -hmm. That means your hands are cold, your feet are cold, the tip of your nose is cold. That's the start, start with. The outer third of your eyebrows disappear. You start to get hair loss in the crowns. You get puffiness under, underneath your eyes. Um, and there's, uh, you start to put on weight because thyroid controls your resting metabolic rate. It, it controls how many calories you're burning today. So you put on weight between your, uh, between your middle section called the it's called the spare tires, one, two, or three. Even though you're slim, you can quite often have a spare tire if you, if you have. Your, and your reflexes are slow. Your, your thyroid controls your heartbeat. So that means that's the largest muscle in your, in your body. If you are low thyroid, low heartbeat. Um, if your thyroid is hyper, that means that you uh, have a fast heartbeat. Uh, but, have a, but have a guess what? All your blood tests, it doesn't matter if it's T3, free T3, T4, free T4, T3U, T4, T7, or TSH, <laughs> they, all de they all appear to be no normal. Right, right. So that is the mask. You know, that's the great mask. Right? Also, I would say, just as you were talking there, I was thinking about, you know, all the women that tell me they're bloated. You know, the digestion doesn't work. We get constipated. Our skin is dry. I mean, it's just... You know, Dr. Turner, it's, it's a mess when the thyroid gland goes out and it is heartbreaking when nobody can fix it. So, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it um, is. I see you were saying. When, when they have digestive problems, uh, that means that the thyroid is more than hyper or hy hypo. As soon as I hear that, is, that they have digestive problems or bloating, I know because thyroid controls the estrogen and the progesterone, I know that they are possibly heading towards an autoimmune disorder, uh, either Hashimoto's, Graves, or Hashitoxicosis. And that's a, that's, that's a definitive indicator. Oh, that's, that, that is right. And we're going to talk about that connection between estrogen and progesterone, uh, thyroid in just a minute. So why, why does the gland become imbalanced? And we just heard the medical medium. He's saying viruses are so important. And, you know, he went into a lot of stuff. But what is your understanding of some of the things that cause, you know, thyroid imbalances and, and disease? Sure. In fact, at, uh, at, at the turn of the century in 1900, only 30% of the people, not A80, um, that's 1900 until now, had a thyroid disorder. Why? Because um, it controls your estrogen and your progesterone, um, and it's difficult for you to conceive, for a fe female, of course, um, difficult to conceive. If you do, it's very hard for the fetus to stick in the first tri trimester. You're likely to have one, two or three miscarriages, which are quite devastating on not only you, but as a couple. And it's also um, a lot more difficult to carry the full term. And until the humidity cribs were invented uh, for the, you know, the, uh, if you had a premature baby, it was very difficult for it it to survive. Um, so it is actually hereditary. So the majority, the vast majority of thyroid is hereditary. There are other things that can trigger it that we can cover shortly. Uh, but the, the, it is, um, as soon as the baby's born and um, you were an OBGYN, you delivered many, many babies. 
I had three miscarriages. I, I now have three beautiful children with three miscarriages because I was hypothyroid. My thyroid was low. Absolutely. And I hear this all the time. But as soon as a baby's born, you do a heel, a heel kick because you're looking at the speed of the reflexes, you judge it, or a heel prick. Because as soon as a baby's born, that thyroid has to be right. And of course, the heel prick is the blood test that may not show up whether the baby needs thyroid or not. If they need thyroid, you've got to give the thyroid immediately. Is that correct? If not, they, they really have severe mental incapacity. So thyroid is yes. very important to the brain and the brain function. Yeah, so genetics is a real, I mean, that is a very important cause. And, you know, I think about stress. Um, do you think that fewer people in 1930 had uh, thyroid disorders because there was less, less toxicity back then? Because that's a cause. Yes. That a cause too yes. Of yeah. Yes. Yeah. The 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 toxicity in today's environment was nothing like it was in 1900. I mean, we didn't have all the cars belching, all the pollution to the air. We didn't have mass food production. There's a whole lot of re re reasons why. That's a, that's the tox that's from the toxins. Plus, a lot of the nutrients we used to get in our fruit, vegetables, meats, fish have disappeared uh, because of mass. Uh, because of mass production uh, and cropping, um, you know, two or three times a year on the same fields. Yeah, I know. I know that. I mean, it's just life has just really become very, very difficult. I know that, you know, you're such a big proponent of iodine. And when we lose our iodine, the thyroid can become imbalanced. Can you talk a, a little bit, Dr. T, about, about the importance of iodine in, in thyroid? Is it, you know? Sure. Uh, but just on the stress, there are two axes, and I know we're going to cover this in a minute, but there's a thing called a HP axis and the, H, the HPT axis. One, of course, the T stands for thyroid, the A stands for adrenal, and the stress impacts the thyroid at three different levels. Uh, so um, if you have a lot of stress, you're impacted at all three le levels. So when you treat the patient, you've got to treat those three levels, not just the one le level. Um, so coming back to iodine. Iodine is an essential um, nutrient, or it, it, it is an element. Um, and there's, um, there's a combination of iodine, iodine that was discovered by a Dr. Lugels back in uh, 1836. He found the right combination to give a patient. You need iodine to convert a thing called T4 into T3 and free it up for intercellular use called free T3. The body cannot use TSH. You cannot use uh, T3 and it cannot use T4. The only thing that it can use is free T3 and a little bit of free, free T4. And um, so the T4 has four ions on it. And then the, and then the, and then the iodine knocks one of the ions off and releases it for, inter, for intercellular use. Of course, you've got to have the D3K2 to open up the receptor pathways for it to get into the my, mitochondria. Um, but iodine is an amazing thing. I mean, if you, when, when you were young, if you see a, a cut or a scratch on, your, uh, on you, your mother used to put this yellow stuff on. That was iodine. It's like a disinfectant to the whole body. If you get bitten by a snake, <laughs> you take iodine. If you get food poisoning, while you're traveling, you take iodine and it kills every, I mean, it, it's a purifier, both internally. So when we give you iodine in a capsule form, it gets into the micro, we transport it into the mitochondria, but externally, of course, um, it kills all the germs on, on you. If you get cut, brash, screw, uh, scraped or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, iodine, the dose would be something like, you know, I, I know you need iodine and iodide. Uh, um, yes. Your company, you know, you make a very, very good uh, iodine solution, but it's about 12, 13, you know. Yes. Maybe yeah, so um, the Japanese who have very, very low um, incidences of breast cancer, and I'll just cover that in a minute, uh, yeah. breast cancer, uterine cancer, and ovarian cancer, and prostate enlargement take an average of 13.8 milligrams per day. We, um, according to uh, the uh, very famous researchers, Fleischer et al., um, they discovered that the ideal maintenance dose in their lifetime of work on iodine 
is 12.5 milligrams, 6.25 for children, 12.5. But we also give 50 milligrams for if you have anything to do with your breasts, that is hot spots in your breasts, breast lumps, um, it, it is a, it's a main surveillance system and the main system of diminishing or taking away anything, any lumps and bumps from your thyroid, anything to do with your breasts, uh, any thickening of the uterine lining. So the, en the endometriosis is because of lack of iodine and we can reverse that. And of course, uh, cysts on your ovaries. <laughs> you know, that is such a a wonderful um, intervention for so many women when they have the fibroids and endometriosis and ovarian cysts, and of course, you know, to make their thyroid work better. So, yes. Daryl, you know, you, 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 oh, and, and for men, prostate enlargement. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. And, <laughs> and, and when you were talking about T4 going to T3, you know, T4 is what the thyroid gland makes, and in the, yes. In the two, three. So listen, this is all a lot of science, but very, very important for people to understand. So when you talk about thyroid, you know, you were mentioning the hypothyroid, the hyperthyroid, and then, you know, the, the Hashimoto's and kind of the mixed hypo hyper types. And you make that diagnosis by symptoms and by blood work and by the reflexes. Is that right? Uh, yes. We, we, um, so we developed a, uh, a, a symptom sheet where we can tell from the symptom sheet, because there are certain symptoms associated with autoimmune. So, um, I mean, the, and, and, and the basic symptoms of, um, as I was discussing before, of, of being hypothyroid, I'll start with hypo first, is cold, ex cold extre extremities, because your body is always in an emergency state trying to keep you warm, especially, and it has, plays a major effect on your brain. Um, if you don't, if your thyroid is not right, because your body's in emergency the, and the whole time, but there's a whole lot of symptoms, unsteady gait, um, you bump into things easily, um, and there's a whole, um, and, and depression, mood changes. There's a whole lot of um, symptoms uh, that are fairly easy to identify uh, hypothyroidism with. Hyper, of course, you get the rapid heartbeat or the skipping of the heartbeat. Um, if, um, and you get a little bit of shakiness, you get increased sweating and you get, and you get brittle nails. Uh, that's a sign of, and uh, of hyperthyroidism. Thyroidism. So on our symptom su survey, uh, you show the symptoms. If you have a combination of those symptoms, in other words, you should be in one camp or the other or none. If you're, if you're euthyroid, that means your thyroid is normal. You won't have any s s symptoms. But if you're hypo, you're in the hypo camp. If you're hyper, you're in the hyper camp. Um, and if you have a combination of both, then that's a problem. We pick them up, up in the questionnaire and that triggers a blood test because we suspect that your Hashimoto's or Graves, which is the autoimmune side of it, or even worse still, a combination of Graves and Hashimoto's called Hashi, Hashitoxicosis. Well, those are that. That's very good that you you know the symptoms uh, help. Now, what about in terms of diagnosis? You're you're really innovative thyroflex machine because this has changed the way that I've been able to manage thyroid more effectively. Well, according, yeah, according to, um, according to uh, Sir Dr. Richard Bayless, the head of the Endocrinology Society in Europe, um, he stated um, at, a, a, at a meeting a few years ago that none, N-O-N-E, and he was very, very specific about this, and he, and he said the word none, of the blood tests are valid. As simple as straight, straight, straight as that. You yeah. cannot diagnose a patient with, uh, with blood tests. Um, so he went on to say the only valid thing are reflexes, mm -hmm. called a deep tendon reflex to be technical, and symptoms. Okay. Um, so um, we have a thing called a Thyroflex machine that tests those things. We test the deep tendon reflex. We test the neurotransmitter speed because don't forget that um, thyroid plays havoc on your brain. Your brain slows down um, quite substantially and, and, and we measure that. And we measure how many calories per day that you're burning with a simple test. And we combine that with your symptoms um, from your symptom sheet and we get uh, we get a 
a something that's 98.5% ACRA. We know it's 98.5% ACRA because we did clinical trials uh, over three years on 2,200 people and we tracked them and we traced them and, uh, and, uh, and we know that it's very, very accurate. So for us um, to, to identify a patient with hypothyroidism is very straightforward. A simple four minute test, we combine it with the symptoms and you know what, how much uh, thyroid to give the pa pa patient. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's wonderful. I've done, I don't know, thousands of tests, but basically it's a little computer that you yes. give the doctor and, and when they do the test, it just, you know, you just are measuring the speed of the reflexes. Like you said, all the other things too, but it is a wonderful, wonderful uh, medical device, uh, Dr. Turner. And I know that you really you. put your heart into this, really you put your heart into this. So I think all doctors who are dealing with thyroid <laughs> problems and, and endocrinologists, my God, you know, need this. And I know that around the world, this is becoming, you know, much more uh, sought after and accepted in, you know, as a, as a real standard of care. So I'm so happy about that. Um, yes. Yeah. So congratulations on that. Now, so we've diagnosed the patient. Let's say they have low thyroid, they're hypothyroid. How do we treat them? Because, you know, in the United States, endocrinologists give Synthroid. That's T4. Okay. Um, we actually, in, in our clinical trials, and this, this is how we, which we'll talk about later, how we stumbled upon the, how to put Hashimoto's into remission and how to cure it to, to, totally. Um, but uh, in our clinical uh, trials, we actually tried out all the different types of thyroid available to us. Compounded ones, um, compounded T3, T4, synthetic T4, uh, and then we also tried natural by identical uh, T1, T2, T3, T4, and T7 um, derived from either pig or cow um, called bovine or porcine. Um, and what we found is that you initially got a bang for your buck, as they say in America, um, <laughs> when you use a synthetic T4. But it starts here and then it declines. And so your doctor will increase it and then it declines. It's, it's like a, a, a seesaw. You go, for the rest of your life, you're going up and down, up and down, up and down. And it keeps on increasing the dose and increasing the dose. Why? Because the, your body does not like synthetic. Number one is T4 only, which the body cannot use unless you give them iodine and D3K2. Doctors do not give you iodine and D3K2 to make it work. Um, and then we found that the ones that we gave the synthetic to, oh, what the compounded to, which is compounded T3, T4, well, they are both synthetic. It worked a little bit better, but it still didn't hold the patient. The body does not like synthetic. And then we found over three years that we got the best performance constant and we're able to hold the patient so, so perfectly um, for, uh, for years and years and years um, with the natural bioidentical. So, our, so we decided that our choice for straightforward hypothyroidism uh, is different for the autoimmune, but for straightforward hypothyroidism, which 80% of everyone has um, is um, is natural bioidentical thyroid combined with um, iodine and D3. I like to make one other statement, and I want you to think of a car engine, right? Mm -hmm. If you have a car, you need petrol or gasoline, you need, um, you need oil, and you need water, right? You can drive a car for a while without oil and water, which is the D3K2 and the iodine. And of course, the thyroid is your fuel. That's the that's your that's your gasoline. So to make your engine work properly, right, without it seizing up, you need all three in the right combinations. Uh, so um, that is why uh, the uh, the the system that I developed works so smoothly, like a smooth car engine, because yeah. we make sure that everyone has all three. So that um, so that you're firing on all firing on all pistons. 
Yeah, D Dr. Turner, this is absolutely brilliant. Now I've been looking at my phone because people are sending me all of these messages. And I'd just like to read one from Olivia Downey is saying, Dr. Turner and the Thyroflex saved my life, took me from bedridden to the epitome of health, could not recommend to him or the test or not enough. Not one person on earth <laughs> whom shouldn't be tested. Oh, thank you. Oh, Very thank you. <laughs> thank you, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. I, I, I think that sums it up with a, you know, in terms of how wonderful the yeah. machine is. Absolutely. I, I actually take great pleasure in helping people. I take great pleasure in my body of work, being able to um, affect people for the rest of their lives. I mean, you've got to be on this medication for the rest of your life. It, it is hereditary. You're born with a shortage of thyroid hormones um, and you, you have to supplement. Does exercise, diet, herbs and spices will not replace the missing hormones. You've got to replace the missing hormones with hormones. You, and, you, and you've got to give it the oil and water, which is the, uh, the iodine and the D3, K2, to make that medication work, perform to its optimum. Um, and I know that the hundreds of thousands of patients that, that we treat a year worldwide, you know, we're in 27 different countries, um, that they, that we have a major impact on the quality of their life. Absolutely. You put a smile on their face. <laughs> yeah, I'm smiling. <laughs> smiling. Yeah, Doctor, because you, yeah. Yeah, there's another, this is so, I mean, this is so important. And, and endocrinologists in the United States do not talk about the reverse T3. And yet that can be one of the, you know, the problems where the T3 is bound up and can't be used. It's in the, yes. the in an active form. So can you speak a little bit about that? What do we do about that? Who should we measure it on all people or, or what, what do we do? It's, it's, okay. Um, we have a, you know, so on our, on our symptoms survey, we have, we, and uh, if you score a certain, um, a certain score on our symptom survey, around about 12 or 13, that automatically triggers a, um, a, a thing called a reverse T3 test. Reverse T3 is a T4 problem. The T4 is building up, but the, but the body cannot access it. It is dangerous uh, to have too high a T4, especially if you give a patient more thyroid because the thyroid is not working. And that's, that is a danger to, to the patient. Um, why do you get reverse T3? You get reverse T3, 98% of all reverse T3 is caused by stress. And once again, I mentioned the HPA and the HPT axis, right? That's the, because I work, the hypothalamus, pituitary, thyroid, works side by side. Yeah. Um, and um, so the hypothalamus can inhibit, the pituitary can inhibit, and the uh, and the adrenal can inhibit the the actions of the thyroid. So uh, what happens is that is that uh, you have uh, two types of cortisol. I won't go into too many uh, details here, but they both combine together and they inhibit uh, the conversion of T4. That's called a deionase uh, into a usable form called free free T3. And it keep, keeps on building up. Why? Because you, your stress is too great. If you don't treat the T3, which is really simple with our methods to treat and fairly fast, you end up with Addison's or Cushing's disease, which mm -hmm. is basically too little, or is like hyper or hypo um, uh, adrenal failure. Uh, in other words, you don't have any quarter, you have to either too much cortisol or not enough cortisol uh, to work, work with. Most people don't have enough. So if they don't have enough, we can do a, um, you start to form a hump on the back of your neck here. Yeah? Uh, and um, so it's a little fatty hump that, and, and that we can feel. That is the start of Cushing's and Addison's. Um, and we can do a saliva test and a reverse T3 test. So we collect, we collect the saliva uh, over four times in one day, you spit into a little tube, and that gives us a graph. And we see that there's, there should be a nice bump and there should be a reserve called fight or flight reserve 
at the end of the day before you go to sleep. Well, quite often what we find people who, who um, have RT3 is they start halfway up the curve. So instead of being up here, they're up here. And they come down and between, um, between 2 and 4 p.m., they call flatlining. They're totally flatlined. They have no cortisol left. Well, that is, reverse, uh, that is what triggers reverse T, T3. It is stress. So helpful. So the way, you know, just looking at this a little bit, stepping back, uh, you differ from traditional endocrinologists because first of all, you treat with, uh, you know, all the, the full component of thyroid, you know, T2, 3, 4, you know, 7. You really treat with all of that and not just the T4, which endocrinologists will do. You don't rely only on blood tests because they're not that accurate. I guess 40% of the time or 50% of the time, they're not really accurate. And then we don't diagnose the disease. So you look at probably the blood work, but you don't, you know, you don't make your final diagnosis on that. You use the thyroflex, the reflexes, the symptom questionnaire. And then also you look at this reverse T3. Endocrinologists in the United States. I don't know, some of them probably do look at the reverse T3, but you know, I was asking a very renowned endocrinologist in the United States about the reverse T3. He said, ah, no, you know, it doesn't. So you, you really differ in, in dramatic ways. And this is why people continue to suffer from their thyroid disease. So you yes. saved a lot of lives here, Dr. T. You're saving a yes. lot of lives. Yeah. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I've had the experience of losing a couple of patients overseas because their doctors continued to give them their thyroid and they died because of reverse T3. So I, I never want to go through that shock again. Um, and uh, because they just kept on, they take more synthetic T4 and the T4 keeps on building up until they, uh, uh, until they kill the patient. So it is not, it's not a happy ending. Um, the reverse T3 is very, very easy for us to treat. It takes us 30 days. But because, under, because the patient has got there with stress, we have to modify their stress response. Mm -hmm. In other words, the patient's got to do some of the work themselves. So we can do treatment. Um, our, um, for instance, our adrenal um, uh, the adrenal that we give them has the hypothalamus in it. It has the, the hormones from the hypothalamus, the pituitary, and the thing, adre adrenal cortex. And there's a thing called ACTH that communicates between the adrenal and the hypothalamus. Um, sorry, and the pituitary. Um, and um, so that holds the patient, but the patient has to um, has to change the way that uh, that they are interpreting the incoming stressors. And I'll give you a little example. Um, we're both driving along in a car in Los Angeles, and this happens quite often, and some idiot pulls out from the uh, carpool lane over the double lines and slams right in front of you and puts his brakes on, right? And oh. you have to brake hard. I could be driving or you could be driving, right? I may put my fists out and shake and scream and call him an idiot and toot my horn. And you say, ah, just let him go. And you don't wor worry about it, right? It's the same stress or, but two people handle it totally differently. The problem is if I put my fist up and I have a, a and I have a, and a reaction, it turns my adrenal system on. I'm dr adrenally exhausted anyhow. I'm actually pulling on blood sugars and lipids. And that's pushing me towards diabetes and heart disease because my lip has got nowhere to go. They go into my arterial walls. And of course, the blood sugar uh, has, has got, I, I can't use, I'm sitting in a car. I'm not running and exercising it off. Not only that, I, I, when I go home, I tell my wife and I tell my friends that about this idiot who put in front of me. And every time I do that, I trigger the same stress response again. Uh, and that's, so it's the way that you handle stress. It's better. So you've got to reprogram your, your brain. You've been handling stress for many years the wrong way. You've got to, you've got to reprogram your brain through meditation or, or mind work or, uh, or reading a special book on how to handle stress in a different me method. So what we tell our, what we tell our patients is, um, is, we're going to take your reverse T3 away. We're going to put you onto this adrenal support that we don't want to keep you on for too long. We can only keep you on for a maximum of 12 months. 
when we re, when we fill up the reserves uh, of the of the cortisol, uh, which is, which are now on empty, and we've got to slowly fill the cup back, back up to the top, which takes six to twelve months. But we want you to do something for yourself, and we give them a sheet on mental exercises and things that they can do, um, similar to meditation, to calm themselves down and to start looking at the stressors that we have in everyday life. I don't care if it's breathing in the air from Los Angeles and the smog and, um, and uh, or driving on the roads or inter in, interacting with your family or anything else like that. We, you've got to look at them in a, in a different way. So this is so helpful because our stress glands basically save our life every day. And, you know, adrenal stress is one of your big specialties too. And the adrenal glands yes. are right on the kidneys, above the kidneys. And they, they modulate our, our stress, right? Big stress, big out, uh, outputs of uh, adrenal uh, hormones. And yes. so what I'm saying about this is how when we're anxious and stressed and our hormones are pouring out, how it affects the thyroid is really important. What else is affected when we're stressed and we're pouring out those hormones? What else starts to happen with the body, Dr. Turner? Well, there's, there's things that can, things you don't realize that can trigger stress that you don't realize. I mean, allergies, right? Infections, accrued um, uh, some of the prescription drugs. If you get wounded, that they all affect your cortisol. What about coffee? You know, um, or caffeine or sugar, white flour. I mean, you don't think of these things. They they are stresses on the body. Being negative, having fear in your body, emotional stress, right? Marital stress. That that's a that's quite a big one. Um, uh, unemployment, death of a love, you know, death of your of someone who's close to to you. The big, the other one right now, of course, is is financial pressures and fear about this COVID, right? And then there's smoking, there's lack of exercise, there's all the toxins, um, uh, lack of re uh, that you, that we we're not getting enough re relaxation. There's poor eating habits. They all have a major impact on your on on your adrenals which is and your adrenals as you said sit on top of your kidneys and there's a thing called the the adrenal medulla and um then there's the uh, adrenal cor cortex they both put out different types of hormones i won't go through the hormones now because i've got big long words um but they communicate through with a thing called acth which is on our questionnaire and uh, we pick up ACTH when you get little patches of hair loss called a a alopecia. And then they come up and they interfere, too much stress interferes with the thyroid hormone, with the, uh, with the T4. As I said, um, stress interferes with the, with the, um, with, um, at, at the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the thyroid and the adrenal cortex they have major Im impacts on on each other. Right. Yeah. That means that if we balance your if we balance your thyroid, we have to balance your adrenals. Absolutely. Otherwise, yeah. we can't. We can, we can never ever get it right. Yeah, we absolutely have to balance all the hormones that are abnormal. And those two, you know, I learned kind of the hard way just when I started uh, managing menopause, uh, you know, I, almost three decades ago now, that where I would try to give thyroid, but I didn't know much about the adrenals. I certainly wasn't taught about the adrenals in medical school. Uh, so, you know, and, it, and then women would develop like palpitations and jitteriness. And, and I realized, oh, you have to really start correcting the adrenals before you do thyroid interventions. Now, you know, that's just one of the things that I kind of learned. But what are the symptoms when your adrenals are high or when your adrenals are low? You know, what are, what are the symptoms so that our, our listeners can really say, ah, I got that symptom. Maybe I have adrenal problems. What well, there are... We, we divide it into two sections. One is symptoms, and one is we ask some questions about what you do. Uh, for instance, uh, rapid heartbeat, as you just ma mentioned, uh, when you get stressed, you can get rapid heartbeat that may not be associated uh, with Hashimoto's. Um, you feel stressed out all the time. You get confused. You're easily confused. And of course, one of the big ones is you can get digestive problems because the gut is very closely tied uh, with the adrenals um 
you can have uh, all the skin disorders from, you know, from psoriasis, the skin allergies to rashes. But if you wake up tired, right? If you wake up tired between 2 to 4 p.m., uh, you feel like a pick-me-up snack, either salty, sugary, or caffeine or coke or something like that. And if you fall asleep as soon as you go to bed or you fall asleep before bedtime in front of the TV or writing a book, you are adrenally exhausted. Oh, That's you, the, because you, you've, you flatline, that tells us that you're flatlining between 2 and 4 p.m. And it really, other symptoms I would think would be depression and weight gain and, um, you know, I, panic could be, I guess, hyperthyroidism, but it could also be, you know, lower thyroid. Do you think panic and anxiety is more hyperthyroid? I mean, hyper. Well, there's a short term stress response and there's a long term stress response. So let's just do the short term one. You can, uh, I mean, if you're very good stress, if you really get stressed, what, what's your body doing? It's saying, I'm in an emergency, you know, I want extra blood to my heart. So your breathing rate increases, your, your heart rate, your, your blood pressure increases, right? Um, the glucose is broken down in a di different way because you need that to your mouth. You need that glucose to your muscles to fight off the, the tiger or lion now. Um, so, and um, your blood flow, your blood flow pattern changes, your resting metabolic rate change. So there's, there's a whole lot of very short term and if you and, and if you're putting your body in and out in and out in and out of that all the time that is a major problem down the road if you do that six or seven times a day i mean if you do it once a week it's not a problem if you're doing that six or seven times a day then that is then you, you're leading yourself into a lot of long-term effects um and of course one of the things that is it can affect your kidneys it can, kidneys by the retention of water it increases your blood volume so your blood pressure goes up right the protein and fats are broken down in a different way um and of course you start to get glucose and resistance which is not very very good um and you get increased glucose in your blood and that's not very good as, no, as no. well and your immune system with all the with all the different things for you for, for you that your immune system does gets compromised because your immune system is suppressed and and really we know now that when the adrenals are functioning at a low level when there's a crash or where they you know the adrenal glands are just so depleted that they can't make their hormones then that's a core root cause i mean stress which is the adrenal gland function yep. really cause of dementia and heart disease and uh as you said diabetes or high high blood sugar cancer so you know the, the glands are extremely important to keep healthy to replenish and how do you treat them dr turner you mentioned that you have a nice supplement that has probably dha and pregnenolone and cortisol and things like that in it and is, is that is that how you and aside from all the lifestyle changes and the relaxation is is that what you do it was not RT3. It was just straight. If you score under 13 uh, and it's not straight RT3 pro problem, uh, we give the patient adrenal supplement with the, with the, with the hypothalamus, the pituitary and the adrenal cortex and the adrenal medulla, along with a, a whole lot of other herbal supplements in that are essential um, to, to it. And, um, to the performance of the adrenals. And we keep them on that for a minimum of six months. The reason is that the adrenals are very slow to recover. If I give you, if I give you thyroid, you can feel the effects in, in seven to four, 14 days. It's very fast. But the adrenals are very slow to recover. And then we reassess whether you need to, because we don't want to overtake the function of, of the adrenal gland, we only want to supplement it. You can't supplement it for too long. One year is maximum on, on our hormones. Don't forget we're giving you, horm we're giving you adrenal hormones. Yeah. Um, and um, so we reassess it after six months, uh, and that's pretty easy to do. That's either with a saliva test uh, or with a um, or plus C questionnaire. And then we see if it's built up enough if it has built, built, built up enough, and then we will take you off it. And then the third part of that, that 
part of the treatment is changing the way you handle the incoming stressors that I explained just, just before. Beautifully. Beautifully. Dr. Turner, I, I see why you're such a sought after international speaker at these big you know, summits and I, uh, in big conferences that we all go to. And you're, you're really one of the, one of the stars there. And I, no. I, appreciative for this information and the delivery of it. And now I want to just change because we're, we're coming to the end of our talk, but I just want to ask you because you know, we have vitality, we have the physical health, and then we have the reasons for it. So in terms of your life, what brings you joy? What, what counts for you in your life? Because you're a role model here for us. Yeah. Um, I have eliminated fear. In other words, I believe in myself. Um, I mean, there are, I mean, someone can induce fear in, into you if they pull a knife on you or, or gun on you, which, which has happened to me quite a few times, uh, or, you, or, or whether you're going to fall off a mountain and, uh, or you're in diving and or you're in a plane, flying a plane, you're about to crash or something like that. I mean, that's real fear. But if you believe in yourself, um, you can do anything. I'm, I'm, I was born in New Zealand. I'm, I'm from a small island that was remote from everything that you can get. In a, born into a socialist society, a socialist go government, I shouldn't have got. I shouldn't have got anywhere. Um, but I believed in myself. I took the chances of going to America. I took the chances of going around the world. I and um, and I took the chances of inventing and developing not only the thyroflex test system, the thyroidine system for testing for the iodine and the halides and the and the core hormone system for balancing the sleep, because uh, we have to balance the sleep, the iodine iodide, uh, you know, uh, the adrenals and and the stress modulators, as well as the th th thyroid. So we have a complete system, um, and uh, and. I believed in myself. I put my money where my mouth was, and uh, and I knew that uh, that uh, that I could help so, so someone. I'm I'm an adventurer. I love to go. I love to go on adventures, um, and uh, and I love to go where I. You'd never catch me on a on a on a ship on a cruise ship. Uh, I go where the other where other tourists will. Will, will, will not go and every year i do i do incredible adventures which actually i've discussed with you and your son conrad a few times um and uh and i write about them and uh and i so i'm keeping a whole record of all these incredible adventures from crossing deserts to to uh to i mean to underwater diving to shipwreck diving to flying planes to where no one else flies them and to volunteering i do a lot of volunteering and the countries that other doctors refuse to go to like bangladesh and uh we have charities in fiji uh, we, uh, we give my wife and i give part of our income in, income to every year and so it's it is being it's about being good believe in yourself and uh having experiences that you wouldn't uh, get so you don't want to waste your life I've, i haven't wasted a single day in my life every day is a new experience but you it doesn't just happen you've got to create them yourself oh daryl you know my son when he first met you it's like he's like the tequila man he's the most exciting man in the world and you have <laughs> fascinated audiences around the world with all of your adventures. And this has been a wonderful adventure for me, knowing you and learning from you and now having you view, you know, a much, you know, a really a very sophisticated audience that needed your sophistication to talk to. So really from my heart, Dr. T, thank you. Really thank you for clearing up this situation about the thyroid and adrenals. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I know that it works. I got confidence in it. I got confidence in my, you know, because I was the one who discovered how to treat Hashimoto's, which my wife ended up with, of all people. And I never realized I'd have to use uh, use um, the Hashimoto's treatment on my own wife. But I can tell you that not only did it reverse it, she could hardly get out of bed. Uh, which is an Hashimoto's as an autoimmune response. Uh, she could hardly get it out of bed. The symptoms were through the roof on a questionnaire. Her symptoms were about uh, about 40. 
uh, plus the plus the hypo symptoms, and I used it. And not only did I reverse it today, she has zero and zero. And you've actually done the blood tests. Uh, zero uh, antibodies. Zero a thing called TPOA being a TGAB. Zero and zero. She's got no trace of it whatsoever. Not only did I heat up, treat up, you know, clear up her Hashi Hashimoto's. I I tr it also clears up on our protocols the other auto the other cascade of autoimmune responses from joint effusion um, no from um, uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, to you know the inflammatory bowel disease Crohn's multiple cirrhosis you know uh, Gillian Barstrom I can go on and on and on uh, and uh, it, it cleared up everything. Oh, this is, this is a gift that you have. And I'm going to have to bring you back on another, on another uh, recording because you have so much to talk about. And you, we haven't even gotten to your new inventions, but I don't want to go do that now uh, because I really want to, you know, give a, a good, you know, half an hour or hour to that. And Daryl, I think, I think you have overwhelmed us with your goodness and overwhelmed us with, you know, all the solutions and how the thyroid works and the adrenal works. So really thank you. And I can't wait <laughs> I don't know, maybe to go flying or something with you. <laughs> it was so much fun. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prudence, um, I would like to say something in return. Um, it was an absolute pleasure about 20 years ago, I met you and your husband and your ch ch children at your clinic in Santa Monica. And I know I tout you as one of the top clinics that I've ever seen uh, in the U U USA. And I've met some amazing patients through you um, because you care about your patients and you dare to be a thinking doc doctor, right? There are doctors who just uh, treat from what they learned in their books from 10 or 20 years ago, you are a thinking doctor. You wanted to delve in and help and see why these perimenopausal or menopausal women were, were, were reacting the way and the way that they were. And you, and you dared to take on technology like I developed and get to the core of what was really problem, not treat the symptoms, but get to the core and reverse the core with a, with a proper balance of estrogen, progesterone, uh, going to natural. I mean, there's a lot of pioneering stuff that you did that you should be very, very proud, proud of, Dr. Hall. Thank you. Thank you. And that is a huge compliment coming from you. Thank you, Dr. T. And we'll be putting information about you and how they can reach you and your clinics. And, and I, I, I love people to go to the best, the best, the best. And you certainly are the best. So thank you. Okay. Thank you from my heart. And you are so generous. Thank, thank you, Dr. Hall. I thoroughly enjoyed doing this and getting the message out. Thank <laughs> you. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.